section of our Great Lakes Shoreline Tour in Port Huron, Michigan. And over here is the St. Clair River. Now this river flows into Lake St. Clair and from there uh, the Detroit River and from there Lake Erie and even Lake Ontario. But the source of all of this water here in Port Huron, Michigan is right there. This is Lake Huron, also known as the Sunrise Side. From the Blue Water region of Port Huron, we followed the Huron shore north, first along M25, a route that parallels the Huron shoreline and serves as the main drag for scores of beachfront communities. The first town north is Lexington, where downtown shops, a marina, and technology are playing a role in the revitalization of what town boosters call the first resort of the north. We have a lot of boaters coming in. We have a lot of access that way. Boaters love coming up here and shopping at all the unique shops. And we they also like to come here because they have the 4G LTE internet speed. And people sure like their internet. We continued north past wide open shoreline. Lots of sandy beaches, parks, more marinas, and almost every few miles, lighthouses spectacular lighthouses, many offering tours, all offering great photo ops. At Bay City on the Saginaw River, M25 ended and we turned north on a new highway, US 23, officially known as the Sunrise Side Coastal Highway. Why Sunrise Side? Because this is the view you get from the Huron shoreline in Michigan's lower peninsula. Every sunrise is different, some a canvas of pastels, others bright yellow and gold. At the East Tawa State Park on Huron's Tawas Bay, our dog Ty was delighted to find his own beach. We were surprised to find the area is one of the best bird watching spots anywhere. This is a migratory channel and we have a lot of birders coming here. We get them from England, Canada, Japan, all over, uh, U.S., New Jersey, the East Coast. They come to watch the birds here. What kind of birds? Uh, Scarlet Tanager, Baltimore Orioles, Indigo Buntings, Piping Plover, which is an endangered species. Still moving north, we came to Alpena. Its Thunder Bay is home to one of the few underwater marine sanctuaries in the country. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration has a world-class museum that commemorates the hundreds of ships lost in the waters off Alpena in what is known as Shipwreck Alley. The area is known for terrible storms, huge waves, 90-mile-an-hour um, winds, but that's not always how it is. A lot of the time it's a beautiful, beautiful body of water to explore. Scuba divers flock to the area to explore the wrecks. We took a glass bottom boat out into Thunder Bay. Even far offshore, we found a solid Verizon 4G LTE signal and so did the other passengers who used cell phones to photograph the wrecks beneath us and then to send them off to friends and relatives back home. It's great. Like you get to see stuff that no one has ever seen before. It's really an awesome experience. Back on land, we continued north, finally reaching the place where Lake Huron's lower peninsula shoreline ends. And so we end this segment of Lake Huron, and we're right here at the very tip of the Michigan Mitt in Mackinac City. Now right underneath that bridge, that's where Lake Michigan meets Lake Huron. But Lake Huron continues on into the UP, along the eastern edge of the UP. And we're going to follow that route in a couple of days, but first we're going to take you to a very special island in the middle of the Straits of Mackinac. And here's a hint, it's not Mackinac Island. We'll tell you that in our next report. Thanks for watching. We're on the road for Verizon and Pure Michigan, road trekking across North America. I'm Mike Wendland. We'll catch you next time.